What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shoots with Coops and I'm very very happy today to bring to you my 2020 film scanning guide. Now recently I've picked up uh, another machine for scanning as well as you know a few bits of software uh, in conjunction with existing software. I want to run you guys through everything because now I've gotten to the point where I have moved all scanning to home because my results are that fantastic. They rival the labs uh, or on par with the labs um, and the amount of money you've saved. I mean, the last two months alone, I worked it out. I think I've saved $280 in scanning costs alone. I'm still getting my color film developed at the lab because I only do black and white at home because oh, color's just that little bit more finicky and I just prefer to let the lab handle it. Uh, they charge me seven Australian dollars per roll of color just to develop. And then black and white obviously is developing at home and all scanning is done at home. And I wanted to bring you this guide because my results have been fantastic and a lot of people reach out and ask me about scanning because I've done multiple scanning videos in the past. So today we're gonna run through the programs that I use and how I get my scans. Uh, I'm not actually gonna be showing you how to scan with the machines because uh, the Epson V700, which I use for 120, I've done a video on that before and so have lots of other people. And my most recent pickup, the Plus, to, uh, sorry, Pacific Image Prime Film XAS, uh, which I did a video on about three, four weeks ago. That thing is amazing. I've already had lots of people pick that up on my recommendation because it's the best 35 home scanner and just amazing results. Uh, so I'm gonna go through my raw scans and how I actually end up with the final results. Really beautiful, pleasing colors. Show you what programs I use. So let's jump into the computer and have some fun. Okay guys, so we are in the computer now and let's go for a quick run through of how I do things. So first of all, like I said, I'm not gonna scan, but I'm gonna show you the settings. So for Silverfast, which is what I use, um, I personally just prefer Silverfast over ViewScan, but either one's pretty good. Uh, so with the Prime Film, so this is the 35 mil settings loaded up. Uh, this was one of the previous negatives I scanned. Uh, obviously transparency, negative, 48 to 24 bit. Um, and then resolution, I scan at 3300 DPI. Now, like I said in the review I did on this scanner, this scanner claims 10,000 but it really does about 5,000, but even 5,000 is pretty overkill uh, for 35 mil, unless you're doing giant, giant prints, which you probably wouldn't anyway. Uh, so I like to scan on 3,300 PPI. Uh, I have the ISRD and scratch removal turned on because this little prime film machine uh, does it in one run. Unlike with the flatbed, it, it does one run of the scan and then another scan to get rid of the dust. This machine does it in one pass and it does a fantastic job of getting rid of all dust and scratches. I absolutely love that feature. Uh, next, I have the sharpening turned on. Auto sharpness, some people don't like to do that. I don't like to do it with 120-ish. Sometimes I do, uh, but I always do it with a 35 and I've been getting great results. Uh, and then Negafix is the next important feature and select your film stock like I have Kodak, Portra 400, uh, sometimes I like to bump up the exposure a little bit uh, and then I just hit scan and like I said in the review this machine will batch scan and do uh, a full roll in one hit once you set it up so that works fantastic. Alright now we'll move on to the silver fast settings for the V700 and 120 scans. So now I'm loading up uh, silver fast that works for the V700 uh, and this is some 120, some 645 I scanned uh, the other day. Uh, so again, uh, negative 48, 24 bit, I scan at 3200 PPI. Now there is a lot of debate online that flatbeds really only do 2400. Uh, they definitely don't do what they claim, but I've found that I just, at 3200, I get just that little bit of a bump um, in resolution. I find it works out pretty well. Um, I do have sharpening set on in this case, and it works pretty well sometimes. Uh, and then, like I said, with this, the only other important thing is using Negafix um, to plug in your film stock, and then obviously, you know, you rearrange your, um, sorry, the frames to scan uh, your images, line them up, and you can, you know, batch scan as many as, you know, you've got in the holder at once. Uh, simple as that. Pretty straightforward settings, nothing too fancy here. 
I uh, don't use, like I said, I don't use the ISRD for the V700 because it takes just too long. It does one scan and then the second scan gets rid of the dust, but it takes forever. So I just like to do the sharpening and the dust removal in Photoshop because it works better than Lightroom. So before we go into Lightroom, 35 mil scans, I just bring straight into Lightroom. Uh, but for the 120, I bring them into Photoshop first. So uh, we bring up Photoshop and I just drag and drop the TIFF file straight into Photoshop. Here's a, uh, some we're going to play with today. Now I zoom in and the first thing I do obviously is I use the spot healing brush tool because it just works better in Photoshop than Lightroom. And I go around and I just spot any dust specks or scratches, anything like that that pops up. Uh, it will always vary depending on how much uh, dust you can get off your negatives and off the scanner before you scan. But I do that for both and then I sharpen uh, inside Photoshop for my 120 because I just feel like it works a bit better with those bigger files. So I go filter, sharpen, smart sharpen I like to use. Um, and now I've already sharpened this image once so I'm not going to hit OK. That's why it looks like it's a bit overkill but it is quite sharp. Um, they're the settings I use there. 214% radius 1.1 noise reduction 20% and then I just hit OK and it sharpens those up and then I will save the file uh, and then move on to the next one for instance this case um, this image here I'll do the exact same thing sharpen up blah 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 save it and then after that we can move into Lightroom so now that we're in Lightroom, I'm going to bring in some scans, uh, a mixture, so I can go, show, you know, walk you guys through how I do the final edit and get the colors correct. Um, so I use, like I said, Silverfast, which if you're lucky, most scanners come with Silverfast installed these days. Um, the Prime Film came with a free copy of it. The Epson had a free copy of it, um, and then the other plugin I like to use is Negative Lab Pro. Um, now, Negative Lab Pro is the plugin that people have been using to digitize their film scans when they'd use DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Uh, I, it works pretty well, but I've found I get better results with using Silverfast's colors and then using the Negative Lab color profiles to tweak um, the files to get the perfect colors, which is what we're going to do now. So, for instance, this first scan, uh, Portrait 800, so 35mm Leica M6, shot it on. Uh, this is how I do it guys. So to get my, great, you can already see it's already a really, really good result as it stands. It's a really sharp scan, really, really sharp scan. So there's only a bit of tweaking I like to do to the 35 mil um, and then 120 just to, to get them perfect. Like I said, um, oh, spotted dust. I don't like to, sometimes it misses it. Um, but see what I mean? See how that's, this is why I prefer to spot in Photoshop because sometimes it never quite gets it right in Lightroom. Anyway, first thing, white balance adjustment. I just hit auto. That one's done it and it hasn't made any corrections because it um, obviously the white balance was pretty spot on. I think it was a cloudy day. Um, the next thing to do is bring up the color profiles. Now this is the part part of the new version 2.2 plugin um, for Negative Lab Pro that has these and they just work an absolute dream. They get rid of that really, really terrible like aqua blue cast in the skies and they fix up the skin tones. Now there's two that I like to use. I like to use the Crystal um, Crystal NL, NLP uh, profile. It just gives that punch and contrast and it looks really, really good on 35. Um, so sometimes I'll select that. Or if you don't like that look, you can just select the gamut correction, which if we zoom in here, you're just gonna see, it just fix up the skin tones, just that little tweak to the skin tones. See how they go a bit more, what they should look like instead of a bit more darker orange. And it does the same thing to the sky, which we'll, we'll do in a sec. But for this image, I actually like. And the thing is, it does do the same thing with the crystal profile. It's just a bumping contrast. But for this one, we're going to hit the gamut correction to clean that up. Then, if you want, you can start doing things like bump up your contrast, you know, drop your blacks, all that sort of thing to kind of tweak the image how you like. But already, you know, that's a great looking scan. The last thing I do is the sharpening. Now, with... Uh, this scanner sometimes it sharpens it up so much that you just can see a bit of that see that you got that bit of that digital color noise there um, so I have made my own little preset to just make life super easy film sharp is what I call it I hit that and you can see these are the um, settings here so sharpening 60 radius 1.2 
luminance, so the noise reduction 30 and detail 30 and then color 10 because you can just see here that just that little bit just tends to get rid of that um, digital noise that sometimes creeps in. And that's it, done. That's an, a beautiful looking scan that's super, super sharp. Um, the color is spot on. I mean, Portrait 800 is a great film and that just looks amazing. So let's move on to another one. So this one here, uh, see how the sky is just, it's just that bit off. And it, I, I see it so often where people scans and they don't really correct it. Um, so first thing like I'm doing, I'm gonna do my auto white balance. Just gonna warm it up a bit. Uh, if you don't like it, plug it in manually. Next, we've got the color profiles. Now, you can see here, this is the biggest thing. See this crappy aqua sky? I hate it. Watch the sky. Watch up here, guys. When you select the gamut correction, see how it's changed the color to what it should be? It's gotten rid of that crappy blue aqua cast, which I hate, and it always seems to creep in with home scanners. That just instantly gets rid of it and makes the sky and the blues and the yellows look like they should. Looks like portraits should. One click. That... This profile setting here, in my mind, makes Negative Lab Pro worth a hundred bucks because it just makes sure that you get perfect colors every time. Lean, like I said, you can bump up your contrast, do any of those sorts of tweaks. And then finally, I like to see how sharp, look how sharp that is. Look at, that. Look at the detail on that little cushion someone's got hanging over the edge. Just like to put in my Film Sharp uh, profile just to clean it up a bit, add the sharpening, soften out some of the digital noise. Look at that. It is beautiful. Now we'll move on to another one with a bit more of a tricky sky and a bit more of a tricky white balance uh, adjustments. Let's just crop that, straighten it up because I must have been on an angle when I shot that. Uh, first thing, like I said, we'll hit the white balance, guys, and it's just going to clean it up. Now sometimes I reckon that's made that too green. So sometimes it's just worth manually dialing um, it back. But remember, it's all to your preference. I think it should be a bit warmer because it was sunset. Like I said, I'll just dial that in like how I like it. Then again, the color profiles. And you will notice again with the blue skies, if we look up here, it just gets rid of that crappy aqua color. And then, like I said, you can choose that one or sometimes this. That looks nice. Sometimes that crystal profile works really well and then you don't have to add any contrast or anything else. It looks nice. Uh, next, another one. So portrait 400 or 800, I can't remember, probably 800 by the look of the grain. Um, I hit that auto white balance and then you can just see that the profile, see how it just, it just cleans up that ungodly blue, bit of bumping contrast, hit my film sharpening profile, doesn't get much better than that for 35 mil. So let's move on to we'll do once in 120 now. All right, so this is a 645 negative um, that I scanned. I'm just going to crop out the film border, uh, make it nice and pretty. All right, so still on the piss, done. All right, so for 120, um, I like to do the same thing because I find that with the Epson, that cut that all the colors are just not as accurate with the Epson. I just like to hit my auto white balance. This was a sunset, uh, Mamiya 645, 80mm lens. Then I like to come in with the gamut correction. It's just really nice and it just seems to get rid of it. And then, like I said, I actually prefer the crystal profile on this one. Don't have to add any contrast. Uh, and then again, my film sharpening and noise reduction little preset I use. I just like to slap that on there as well. It just seems to really finish out the image and give it a really nice look. Um, now this is another one, here we go. So this is yeah, another 645 on the Mamiya um, that just, you know, it just when you've got those beautiful blue skies that Portra just responds so well to, sometimes it just, the colors are never quite right. So like I said, auto white balance and that will warm it up. I reckon that's too warm to be perfectly honest um, because it wasn't quite that warm yet at sunset, but it, so you dial it back, like I said, and then we can hit the profile. So I just, if you just notice, just when you bring it in, it just see how the, the we've got that, that aquarish color of the, of the water, which it didn't really look like that. But when I put the gamut uh, correction on 120, it just really makes that color look like it should. 
and you can add a bit of contrast if you want. Um, then I'll whack my film sharpening little preset on there, and voila. Now, another one with the tricky sky I want to show you here, because this is a good one. This was Portra 400 on the M6. Uh, hit my auto white balance to clean it up. It's done a pretty good job this time. Now, if we look again, look at what it does to see how we've just got that. It, it, you don't notice it until you actually use this preset to see how much it changes the sky. But now, look, the sky is a bit more light, more towards the probably a bit more towards the magenta side, but it just cleans out that blue cast as well that you can see in the windows there. It just takes that out of it. And then I slap my film sharpening preset on and the results I'm getting are amazing. Um, we'll get down out of Lightroom and we'll go to some full screen examples using this same method. Um, I shot some portraits uh, with some friends on the weekend and I got some really nice portraits um, Mamiya 645 that scanned with the V700 the colors are great I have to say this magenta wall threw out the white balance a bit and took a while to correct it but that's the V700 scan with silver fast doing the same techniques that, that I've just showed you to get these sort of results at home um, another one here's a close up portrait um, again really really sharp um, you know beautiful colors things look like they should it's fantastic let's go back and find another 120 shot um, here we go here's my son Max and his grandmother you know beautiful colors it's not out of whack nice and sharp I mean I'm just getting such great results at home um, that I don't need to worry about going to the lab anymore here's another one portrait shot on the Mamiya. If we zoom in, I mean, look how much detail we're getting. It, it does a great job for 120, but that's why I got the, the prime film for 35 because it just, the, the flatbeds don't do the greatest job on 35. But the colors look spot on for portrait. I think this is portrait 160. Colors look spot on. Um, there's no color cast. Everything's fantastic. Uh, we'll go back and look at some more um, 35 mil. Um, happened to come across the protest in the city the other day but this is portrait 800 um, scanned with the prime film using the settings I've just showed we've got look plenty of detail for 35 I mean there is oodles of detail there we've got some really really great colors um, it doesn't get much better than this for 35 mil I mean you know I've got 120 for the real you know important high res stuff I want but for 35 mil uh, it's fantastic. Let's just also show you guys quickly some black and white examples. Um, here's my son, Max, playing around. Some HP5. Home scanned. Absolutely beautiful results. Um, so, yeah. There we go. So, guys, sorry that took so long, but that is my scanning workflow. My results are amazing. I couldn't be happier. Um, and to me, you know, being able to do it all at home is fantastic and get the kind of results that you know you would get from a lab it's been fantastic yes it's expensive you know having two scanners you know one dedicated 35 one dedicated 120 having silver fast running negative lab pro as well it all adds up but in the long run if you're serious about scanning at home you will save money like i said it's only been two months and i've saved 280 odd dollars in scanning costs um, alone from the lab which is fantastic uh, any questions guys throw them down below I'm sure there will be lots if I can help I will I'll try and answer everything I can as quickly as I can for you guys uh, thanks for watching another episode of shoots with coops and I'll see you in the next one